all across the world, there are bays that look like continuations of rivers. And while most people would just call these bays or inlets, the official geographic term is a ria. A ria is an inlet or a bay, but it was formed by the drowning of a river valley. One prominent example of this is the Chesapeake Bay in the United States, where an ancient river valley got completely flooded and now forms the long bay we have today. Now, since rias are drowned river valleys, they have a dendritic or tree-like pattern to them. So as you can see in the Chesapeake Bay, it has this main branch and also places that branch off of it, making it look like a tree. So in today's video, let's talk about how rias form and some interesting rias across the world. So as mentioned previously, rias are drowned river valleys. Now, there are a few primary ways that these river valleys have been drowned. The primary way that these rias have formed is from rising sea levels after the last ice age. So the sea levels rose and they filled up portions of the river valley that at the time were just rivers, but turned them into ocean. The second way rias can form is from tectonic activity. Basically, plate tectonics can move the landscape downwards, which in turn floods the river valley. And the final way that rias form is from erosion. So here are many rias that are along the northern coast of Papua New Guinea, and they were actually formed in lava river valleys that got eroded down and thus filled with water. And this means that in these places, you will not really see any streams going into the rias because it was formed by lava. And one more important distinction that we need to make about rias that differ them from other inlets such as fjords in Norway here are that rias have to be non-glacial. So while these fjords in Norway may have been flooded valleys, they are flooded glacial valleys and thus are considered fjords. So the first place we are going to look at is the region of Galicia in Spain. Now, Galicia is actually where the term Ria was created. In Galician, the word Ria translates to river, and so they created the name Ria. And looking at their coast, it makes sense that they created this word, because there are Rias everywhere in Galicia here. So we have the Ria de Vigo, Ria de Pontevedra, Ria de Arauza, Ria de Muros y Noya, and many more rias going all up their coast. And this area on their western coast is known as the Ria Baijas, which basically translates to Lower Rias. And as you can see, there are four major rias that I said the name of before. And the Rias Baijas were primarily formed from the tectonic activity method that I mentioned previously. So plate tectonics in this region lowered the landscape and brought water into this. However, that is not the only method. These rias have also been expanded by by erosion. And another interesting thing about rias is that they are almost always estuaries because they always have freshwater rivers flowing into the saltwater ocean that have flooded the river valley. So in each ria, an interesting estuary ecosystem is created there. In all of the rias of the Ria Spijas, fishing is the most important industry. This is the port of Vigo and these are all fish farms. And the unique estuary ecosystem has made the port of Vigo the most busy fishing port in all of Europe. But now let's move on to another region that has many rias. This is the southern coast of England, and they also have many rias in this area. You see, the southern coast of England is what is known as a submergent coastline, essentially a section of coastline that has significantly dipped in its elevation because of the sea level rise since the last glacial period. However, this submergent coastline is not just caused by the sea level rise. It is actually also caused by glaciers. So when glaciers were covering the northern half of England, they were heavily compressing the landscape. But then the glaciers retreated, causing isostatic rebound, essentially the land bouncing back due to there no longer being the pressure of the glacier on top of it. And this actually caused an interesting seesaw effect where the rising land in the north actually sunk the land in the south. And this creates the rhea-filled coastline that we see today, primarily in the Cornwall area here. A very interesting example of a rhea in this Cornwall area is the Kingsbridge Estuary here down in the South Devon area. Now, the reason that this Kingsbridge Estuary is so interesting is that it is a very extreme ria. 
you see this area is disproportionately large compared to the tiny streams that flow into it. As you can see, if we look at the end of the arms of these rias, there are very small streams that flow into this ria, but yet the ria is very wide in size compared to these streams. And again, this was just caused by the sinking of the land and the rising of the sea levels in combination in this area of England. But now let's move on to probably my favorite example of a ria in the world. This is the Musandam Peninsula in Oman. And at first glance, this doesn't even look like a Rhea at all. And that is because it is a very extreme example of a Rhea. So this peninsula and Rhea's were formed from tectonic activity as well. However, this tectonic activity was pretty extreme. Right next to the Musandam Peninsula here is the boundary between the Arabian Plate and the Eurasian Plate. And what we see at this location is the Arabian plate being subducted underneath the Eurasian plate. So this has created a significant dip in the land, which has turned the Musandam Peninsula into what we see today. So this Musandam Peninsula used to look like what we see slightly farther to the south here, with many mountains, and in between these mountains, there are valleys and small, mostly dried up streams in this case. But because of the subduction of the Arabian plate that is very near to the Musandam Peninsula, it has significantly reduced the land and filled in these valleys to just the extreme points of these mountains. And this place just looks so crazy to me on Google Maps. I mean, this place was so close to becoming an island. Look at this very small isthmus of land here, just around 780 feet across. And there is a photosphere here on Google Street View, and it is crazy to see how this is all that is connecting this peninsula to the land. So those are the reasons why these rias are my favorite probably in the entire world, just because of how extreme they are and what a cool landform they create. But that is going to be all for today's video. I encourage you to just look all around the earth and you will definitely find rias. I mean, basically at any point where there's a river that flows into the ocean, it is most likely either a ria or a river delta. And so, if I taught you something new, please subscribe and join my Discord for updates. I will see you guys in the next video.